that's like the worst nightmare of any content creator. So, hey everyone, welcome, welcome, welcome to episode 180 of Japan According to a Kill, the、uh, Japan According to a Kill podcast. We're still here. Thank you guys for joining me for another great episode, a drama filled episode. <laughs> I had some drama this week.、Um, But I think it's, it's all for the betterment of my channel, my content, everything. It was a learning experience for me this week. I'll explain that on this show.、Uh, I'm going to review a few things and we're going to get into it. So it's going to be a pretty smooth episode this week. Oh, I do have some announcements uh, about uh, my merch store that I told you guys that I'm working on. So some new developments. I'm not ready to release everything yet, but I do have, I think, about five designs. That、um, t shirt, sweatshirt、uh, designs. I didn't do hoodie because I don't like the, the, the ones available for, for me to、um, create. So I'm still working on that. And,、um, but they got a couple t shirt designs, long sleeve shirt and sweatshirt and stuff like that for you guys ready to pop out. I'm just waiting on I ordered a few samples. So, I'm waiting for my samples. And then, if when the samples come out,、um, my mother in law gave me an idea that I should do an unboxing on, on, on one episode. So, whenever that comes, I'll save it. I'll do an unboxing for you guys. Let you, we, we'll, we'll take a look at it together, see what's going on. And、uh, then, if everything's you know, cool or whatever, then <laughs> if it's not cool, <laughs> what am I going to do? <laughs> if I open up the box, it's just like. Crappy, I'm just like, oh, <laughs> I might have to just delete the episode. I don't know, but um, but yeah, so I'm looking forward to that, and、uh, I'll do I'll, I'll probably do that. I'm just waiting on samples, and then after the samples, if the samples are, are good, then I'll share the link to my merch store. And if you guys you can peruse if you'd like, and if you'd like, you can purchase and let me know what you think. So that's about it. Um, there is some drama going on with my social media right now, my YouTube. I'll let you know what's going on.、Uh, so, basically, your boy, it was almost over for your boy on YouTube this week. <laughs> like in the past 48 hours, it, was, it got real for me because、uh, in a matter of 48 hours, I got two content strikes、uh, for me against me on YouTube. If you're not clear what a content strike is, it basically means that. You know, a creator、uh, accuses you of violating the copyrights. So、uh, if you get three of them on YouTube, your channel gets completely deleted. I mean, I'm still a new channel, so, wow. But, but still, you know, it was quite, quite shocking. I got the first one、uh, and I was like, okay, fine. I it, it was really helpful because it, it made me change the style of content I was creating.、Uh, originally, basically, I was grabbing some TikToks and using those. To as like background for the topics that I was discussing, and I was adding my commentary on top of them. And I thought that would be enough creative license, but、um, it wasn't apparently. <laughs> and so a few people got pissed off at me for doing that, which, you know, again, totally cool with that.、Uh, you know, I, 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 I emailed them like, look, it's a rookie mistake. I'm sorry. I wasn't trying to be malicious in what I was doing, I was uneducated and, you know, Uh, probably careless, but not really、uh, malicious. So, hopefully, one of the guys, hopefully, he'll delete it. But, but you know, if after 90 days, if I don't do anything,、um, any other violations, it, it, they'll go away and it should be fine. And、uh, just to be sure, I deleted like every, <laughs> every other like piece of content using anything else. Like, I just deleted it. So, if you, if you look on like YouTube or even my TikTok, even my Facebook, no one really checks that. But, you know, the,、um, the stuff that was there, a lot of it is gone just because anything using anyone else's stuff, I just didn't want to piss anyone else off. So, I just, anything that's even suspicious, I deleted it. From now on, I'm just using.、Um, Background pictures. I'm just, so I'm just taking a lot of stuff on my phone, adding just like pictures, my own kind of meme commentary in the background. And I think that should be okay, but no videos or anything like that. So I'm just staying clear of that forever, basically. So、uh, unfortunately, there's not going to be any, any video at all on any of my stuff from now on. I had a really interesting Suntory um, uh, educational, uh, whatchamacallit. Drinking video. I'll, I'll probably put the link. Let me write a note for myself.、Uh, link, Suntory. I'll link, I'll, I'll link that 
to the podcast wherever you're watching this or con- you're listening to this. You can check it out. This is really hilarious. Uh, Suntory Izakaya <laughs> educational uh, video about how to uh, drink if you're if you're going to a Japanese izakaya, which was which is really good. Now I, I put my commentary on it, but again, I I just didn't even want to risk another content strike on that, so I just took that off there too. I recorded that a few days, and it was doing well, but. Yeah, um, it was gone. So so what I'm going to do in this episode is review some of the content that I uh, just explain some of it, you know, um, and, and some of the topics I was talking about. And and yeah, also what's going to happen probably because I, I, I still want to do TV and movie reviews as well. But again, I'm, I'm not risk, trying to risk content strikes at all, because like the way that happened is is like if. I can imagine. I'm glad it happened now that I don't have a lot of stuff in my library because those videos are starting to take off. But like if I, you know, do that format and then I have like a bunch of videos online and I get I start getting, you know, well known or something like that. And then I just get like two, three in a row, then that's kaput for me. So that's like the worst nightmare of any content creator. So I'm just not trying to risk that. So, uh. What I'm thinking is for my for my content moving forward, the podcast will be the podcast like full mic, you know, all this stuff. Um, Maybe I'll try and put some still images somewhere in somewhere (laughs) if I can. And the rest of the stuff will probably just be handheld a video of me ranting and going off the the video reviews that I did before if you if you had the chance to watch them I really liked them because you know I um I was uh cutting up clips and things like that which were approved copyright approved but I've heard some reviewers say like those standards change and then they got strikes and warnings and so I'm just not messing with it so I'm gonna just do a standard pictures still images and hopefully that's okay <laughs> but I might to be honest with you I might even I might even chill on the movie and, and, and reviews until this this situation dies down until fall that probably will be the best thing for me to do just just to be sure like i just want to be sure like everything is is, is cool um and i got i did a i did a freaking uh video the other night and I, about japanese watermelons and i had like a, a simpsons uh homer simpson the episode when they came to japan he was carrying a square watermelon you know on tiktok that got like like a little bit like we need to hold it and check it and i was like oh my gosh it's happening again so (laughs) so like i'm completely paranoid i'm completely sketched out i have no idea what you know what the best thing is so i'm just being completely safe on 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 that end uh, at least until um either october or until one of if one of the strikes uh gets taken away Hopefully the guy I emailed last night, hopefully he finds it in his heart to forgive you, boy. You know, if not, like we'll just do straight commentary and stuff like that for the rest of the time. So that's what's going on with me. Uh, again, not, 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 nothing like traumatizing. I, I, I did it to myself and I, I kind of took the risk without really thinking too deeply about it. You know, I thought I was going to be in the clear, but you know, that, that, that's the way things are. And, and, you know, I, I think it was a really good learning experience for me. If I can get through this whole thing unscathed by like October, <laughs> if I can get to October, if I can get to October unscathed, then I say it was a really good learning experience for me as a, you know, fledgling content creator, if you will. So, so yeah, that, that's all the stuff, um, for updates. So let's get into it. So, um, so what I'm going to do is talk about some of the stuff that got deleted <laughs> and just go over it for you guys. Uh, it's, it's three things, uh, actually you know, two, two things, but, but okay. So first let's talk about one of the things that I was really excited to talk to you guys about, which is Japanese umeboshi and Japanese umeboshi. If you don't know what they are, they are, uh, small pickled plum uh, one person in a comment before it got deleted said <laughs> you can hear me say that over and over again um said they're kind of they're not plums but they're japanese fruit that resemble plums and i'm not sure sure on that but basically uh they're preserved in in sauces <laughs> and and they're eaten by themselves or they're eaten with uh rice or other you know japanese dishes they're very tart and sour I hope you're enjoying the podcast. 
before I forget, I forgot to mention it in the middle of the podcast, but please remember to like, subscribe, watch this on YouTube if you're watching it on YouTube. Uh, no, <laughs> watch this on YouTube if you're not watching it on YouTube uh, and leave a comment so that we can get our numbers up so I can get my merch store going and we can really uh, share the Japan according to a cute world with everyone. All right. Thanks. Enjoy the podcast. If, if you haven't had Umeboshi before, they're great. Uh, you, you for me there's different levels to umeboshi like a I don't, I don't say dirty bento but like a cheap bento a cheap bento or a reasonably priced bento would have umeboshi like a small one but it's kind of like hard and i don't know i don't even know if it's umeboshi actually well because it's kind of hard it's really hard i don't know i've never asked a japanese person is this actually umeboshi it might be another cheaper uh japanese fruit that's just been preserved but it's kind of crunchy. Uh, that isn't as good as like soft umeboshi. Like for me, the softer it is, I guess the the longer it's been preserved. And that's when you get, it just like melts in your mouth. It, it's just like, bleh, you know, <laughs> it, 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 with rice or, or whatever side dishes you're, you're having. It, it is really, really delicious. Uh, so I was just talking about that for a few minutes. And, and I, if if you, you can buy like, whole things of umeboshi actually too and I, I would recommend you do that if you're a rice lover you come to japan uh or even if you're moving here and you if you like tart foods which i do and you know pomegranate is my favorite fruit get get you i mean not a huge pack because powering through like a huge pack of umeboshi is pretty hard but like you know if, like a simple side dishes plus some uh whatchamacallit Rice and and one or maybe one maybe two umeboshi depending on how big they are is a great meal in Japan. It's a great. It's really affordable. And I was saying before, like I had, I remember <laughs> when I first came here uh, and I started eating umeboshi. I was like, oh, this is really really good. And I went. I think the first one of the first times I went on a cherry blossom trip with my wife, who was my girlfriend at the time. She um, we were at, on this mountain and they were like. It was like a ume tree, like a Japanese plum tree. And one was on the ground. I was like, ooh, ume. Like, I was about to eat it. And she like basically slapped it out of my hand. I was like, don't do that. It'll kill you. <laughs> I was like, what? So apparently, I don't know if it's an urban legend or how true it is, but uh, ume are supposed to be poisonous. Probably not poisonous, maybe carcinogenic. If you will, it might be an urban legend. Um, one person in the comments said you have to eat a ton of them to do it. But you know how these things are, it was, especially with like Japanese culture or ancient Japan. One person probably ate a million of them, died, and then it just spread that they're poisonous unless they're well preserved. So, so yeah, um, I have no idea what the unpreserved uh, fruit, I'll call it, tastes like, fruit tastes like, but umeboshi is good. Umeboshi is good. I mean, they do have umeboshi flavored snacks. If um, they, I don't like those because it's not real umeboshi. It's just like chemicals <laughs> masquerading as real fruit. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I'm always like, whenever I eat them, I'm like, yeah, this tastes like the real thing, but it's probably this is probably poison. You know, it's probably got a million chemicals in it or something like that. So I try to stay away from those and just like the real thing. But, you know, anything ume flavored is good. There's also umeshu, which is, you know, uh, Japanese plum wine uh, is made in different ways. Uh, it's more umeshu is more popular with women. Uh, yeah, for a guy, mm, it's kind of like a girly drink. Cause it's kind of sweet, but um, yeah, it's not as strong in the alcohol department but people some people do um as a hobby make their own umeshu and so they'll just have someone like just with a big if you walk into somebody's house and there's just like this big container with a bunch of like japanese plums sitting there they're like oh i'm making umeshu and they'll just let it sit there for like the summer basically for a couple months and ferment until they're ready to drink it and then like siphon it off you know <laughs> at their leisure so don't be surprised if you if you see that uh and if someone offers you some if you're a drinker definitely do oblige depending on their skills or how long it's been fermented the taste does vary i've tasted a wide range some where i'm like oh that's really nice and some where i'm like mm, can't have some water <laughs> you know <laughs> so so yeah it really depends but but that's that about umeboshi
Next next topic that got deleted <laughs> is one where uh, I was talking about 7-Eleven smoothies, right? So my son, like, okay, when I was in America, you know, um, 7-Eleven smoothies in summertime was the, was the joint. You get a big cup, a huge oversized American cup of uh, 7-Eleven Slurpee, and you just pour that thing in. It changes your tongue, all types of colors, and you just drink this syrupy frozen liquid for a couple for like an hour basically as you're driving in your car or something like that right but japanese japan i think i remember in like probably like five ten years ago i went to uh i was in harajuku for some reason and to catch the doorly i don't even know why but i saw the 7-eleven there had smoothies of course they got like japanese size uh cups right it's like a, a mini cup of uh slurpees and it was like an authentic slurpee but it was just like this much and for like three four hundred yen i'm like ah, I, I, i'll have that once just for nostalgia purposes but i'm not coming back here so i've been off the smoothie the 7-eleven slurpee train for a long time but in the past few years uh they have come out with a really really good uh smoothie machine so basically what they do they sell cups of just frozen fruit and then when you you buy the frozen fruit and you scan it and then or you pay for it you so you basically buy a cup of frozen fruit and then behind the register or near the door there is a machine that that um pours a little water in it stirs it up chops up blends it up and turns it into a smoothie in about a minute it's really really cool um if you don't know how to do it you know you can just my son is like an expert at it now he he knows like all the flavors he wants he you know he's like oh i like the mango i don't really like the green i want this i want that he knows exactly what to do he's he's like a uh uh a tier you know a ranked smoothie kind of 7-eleven smoothie connoisseur just like his pops you know i'm a smoothie fanatic so um so yeah, that that is something you should definitely check out if you're living in Japan and you haven't had one yet, definitely do it. I did see something really, really funny, like uh earlier this year. So this older lady, she um went into a seven eleven in my neighborhood and I'm like buying something. So she goes into seven eleven and she gets the smoothie cup. But she just wanted the fruit. So she buys this frozen fruit and then just walks out to 7-Eleven. And of course, it's Japan. So like in America, the staff would be like, all right, that's weird, whatever. Go ahead, it's your business. But the staff goes running out, chases her into the park and like, oh, Kaksama, oh, Kaksama, which is like customer, you know, excuse me, ma'am. And so I'm, I'm looking out what's going on. And of course, like the staff has explained to her for five minutes, like, no, you just don't buy the fruit. You got to use this machine. And, da, 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 da. and the lady's like get out my face i just want my fruit <laughs> she, it took her it took the staff like about one or two minutes to like fully explain like no come back into the store and i'll show you how to make the smoothie and finally you know chris sabian negotiated the 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 lady to come back in and, and make the smoothie she was like showing her how to do everything by the time i left but that was hilarious to me so so sometimes those kind of things happen but if you're in 7-Eleven in Japan, definitely check out the smoothies. They are a good deal. All right. So one more thing, one more thing, and I'm going to get out of here. It's just going to be a quick episode. Um, Beating the summer heat. Like, so it's summertime. Like we had like 38 degrees Celsius, which is about like 99 degrees the past couple of days, like three, four days in a row. Uh, it's only down to like, what, 28 you know, which is probably like 90, 80 something in Fahrenheit now. Uh, so it feels cool, you know, thank goodness and it's, it's cloudy, but it's still a little bit humid here. So in Japan, like in the past, I don't know when it really started, but maybe again, five, six years ago, cool sheets and cool related items have, have become a really big uh, moneymaker. And you put Nitori is is at the forefront of the cool sheet technology. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, basically like it's a bed cover that's made of like cool. <laughs> it's made of cool. It's just cool heat resistant material. Um, they have blankets as well, pillowcases as well. Like so, because Japanese people aren't really traditionally aren't really all about air conditioning. You know, actually, every year, like hundreds, maybe even I'd say hundreds. I don't know about thousands. Hundreds of elderly people 
die because they don't turn on the air conditioner. Like traditionally, like it's it's um, probably an urban legend that using the air conditioner is really unhealthy for you for uh, in Japan. So older people in Japan, like it'll be like 90 degrees Fahrenheit again, like about, you know, 33, 34 degrees, 90, 95, 100 degrees. And literally people will, especially elderly people will set their air conditioner on like a timer and you know they'll just sleep in their room and think like okay it's cool i can go to sleep and then they'll just like of course the room gets like scorching hot because all the windows are closed too and so in the middle of the night and they'll just like pass away you know it's pretty sad like uh, on the news like all the time here you you see that but um the cool sheets help with that a bit It, it does like it does help So, um, Nitori, N-I-T-O-R-I, is a really, uh, famous interior goods store here. If you're you're not familiar with it, they got everything you need, sheets, beds, whatever. You know, it's like Ikea on steroids. And, um, they, no, Ikea is like Nitori on steroids. I don't know which one is crazier, but, but anyway, I I digress. So uh, we got a, a bunch of those uh, bedspreads and, and related things, and it, it's a really, really important thing for you a, in Japan. Like they have ones for winter and ones for summer, and again, just because like a house a house here, there's no central air. It, generally speaking, some modern homes have central air, but generally speaking, you're not gonna have central air in a, in your house or apartment at all. So you got to come up with a little bit creative ways to beat the heat, and cool sheets is 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 a one way that is done in japan and in winter uh warm bed spreads or you know um with fur or some stuff (laughs) on top of it (laughs) is 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 done in winter and in fall we just have like fall and spring just standard sheets so when yeah definitely check it definitely check those out in summertime if 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 you're starting to feel the heat and you don't know about it Nitori is is one great one if you have an IKEA near you but you of course you can actually oh just order stuff online from Nitori uh, they don't have an English website I think so you're gonna have to either get your Japanese game up or get a Japanese friend or you know partner or whatever to help you order some stuff but if you do that I think you you'll definitely be satisfied with the results. So I think that's about it. The only th- other thing I got to do is um, put the link to that Suntory thing. Please remember, like, subscribe, uh, comment. You know, again, I forgot to say it in the beginning. Uh, uh, <laughs> watch this on YouTube. You already watched the whole episode. <laughs> I'm telling you, go, go watch it again on YouTube. Okay, just let it play in the background while you go do something else. Right? <laughs> Uh, I'm killing myself for that. But yeah, I'll probably, mm, yeah, whatever. I'm going to annoy you guys with that. Okay, whatever. All right. So anyway, thank you guys, and I'll holler at you next time. Peace.